Hi, Ian Roberts and Mastering Composition. So first I wanted to mention three things from a bunch of comments that were like people left last week. And thank you always for the comments. I really enjoy them. Uh, one is that I didn't get photographs of the other artists' work. It was a very informal, quick thing we did at the very last evening. I also didn't do any demos of my paintings as I was doing them because it was very gusty most of the time and it was hard enough to keep your your easel up, let alone making sure your camera wasn't getting blown in the river too. And everyone was asking me, how do I not get sand on the painting? And I take it from the easel and very carefully, not dropping it in the sand, slide it into a wet box and it stays there till it's dry. So this week, I want to talk about inspiration. And inspiration comes from the root of breathe, to inspire, and spirit. And so it's really about what's deep and personal and real for each of us. And perhaps what's unique to us, which is perhaps what is the most important thing we can address in terms of what we can do in our artwork that is going to really engage us and hopefully engage other people. So I know that I have to trust what it is I'm attracted to. I have to know what it is that inspires me. But as it happens, I've lived in LA for about 12 years and I have not found LA a particularly attractive or interesting place to paint. And so this month, I'm gonna challenge myself to explore my neighborhood and paint it and make videos of that. Because, you know, beauty really, it's everywhere, right? And so I'm gonna find it here this month. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. But again, I'm sharing my process here. I'm getting an idea, I'm sharing my process. It's not just curated finished paintings that I like. You're gonna see the process of this month of me painting my neighborhood. So it may give you more insight into your own process in terms of being a painter. So I started with a place just around the corner from where I live. I walk this way back from the store all the time, but somehow I took a slightly different angle this day and this caught my attention. I really liked this line coming in, the big vertical of the tree here that then takes us to the next tree back here and then takes us back into over here. I really liked the structure of what that was doing. This is cropped a little bit more tightly to the way I actually painted it. I came back the next morning, very overcast morning, and drew it. And I really liked the sort of arrangement of shapes on, in the drawing. It's about six inches by six inches. I was happy with the sketch, so I gridded it up on tracing paper, redrew it carefully on the canvas, and started. I often get comments, uh, you know, in the comment section about, oh, my paint seems to go on so easily, but can, you can see here it's sort of dragging here. That's because it's acrylic prime. Normally I use oil prime, and it's just much easier, flows on much more easily. Uh, and then the bush on the side there, you see it's got sort of a red and a green quality, so you've got a very dull alizarin and the sort of a dull green in there, that little halo of light just on the edge. And then I'm carving the shape this is a mixture of alizarin and phthalo green. I'm just carving the shape with the same dark. You see, it's pretty dark, but then I'm just with the quality of the pressure of the brush, I'm just kind of blending and forcing it to kind of create the sense of the form of the structure of those bushes. And then even on a dull day, you can get some pretty intense greens just popping like that. And there's the finished painting. Although what happened is the June gloom burns off at about 11 o'clock and while I was finishing this, the sun came out and I thought, whoa, that's better. I should paint it like that. The first painting was okay, but I just felt that with the sunlight it just seemed more exciting and more engaging. It's not like, oh, I didn't do a great painting. It's just that one idea led to the next. And it's all in the interest of just working towards what inspires you. So notice the color of the sunlit road and now this shadow color, because I want to go into the warm and the cool of shadows on the road and in this foreground grass area. So how we get this good sense of shadows sitting on the ground. This is a photograph I took the other day at my daughter's high school graduation. Two nicely socially distant, distanced 
chairs. But look at the temperature shift of warm to cool there. Look at how, I mean, it's blue, right? There's no question that is cool. Now, over here, we have warm grass and cool grass. Because it's now got local color, it's sometimes a little harder to see. But when you see the clue here, you realize, oh, that's a big temperature shift as well. And it's consistent. The difference between that temperature shift and that temperature shift is consistent. And you create really good shadows by making sure that everything that's in shadow stays cool, relatively speaking, everything in sunlight stays warm, relatively speaking, and we get that nice sense of sunlight hitting the painting. And so there's the cool, dark grass, the shadowed grass, matching the shadow on the road. And you can see the pine needles in the gutter, which you'll see a hit of warm light on those that give the sense of sunlight on it. But you put big mass of green in shadow, and then you put the sunlight on the grass, and it looks like sunlight. At warm and cool and it's consistent right and then you get the warm light on the pine needles and the warm light on the curb and you get a sense of sunlight and there's the finished painting and you can see the cool against the warm the cool mass against the warm mass cool against warm warm against cool consistently throughout give us the sense of sunlight but notice one thing that the tree is creating an ellipse of shadow like that. And when you're looking straight down, you can see all this stuff going on when it's right close to you. But as it goes further back, just like ellipses do, getting further and further, you know, flatter and flatter, notice how flat anything that is happening back there is getting because otherwise it'll start to tilt forward. And if you start creating sort of shapes like this back there, it'll just tilt the whole thing forward and it won't lie flat on the ground. So I hope you enjoyed that and found it helpful, inspiring. Uh, you might look to your own neighborhood, your own backyard as something to paint or to explore as the possibility of something to paint, you know, a challenge of your own. Please do like the video if you enjoyed it. Please do subscribe and do sign up for my email list so that you get this every Tuesday in your inbox and don't miss one. Um, so listen, have a great week. I will see you next Tuesday and bye for now.